Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Women Pepperdors Podcast with your host, Mary Oquendo. I have two guests here today. The first one is Sierra Albert. Hey, Sierra. Hi. Hi. I'm happy to be here. Oh, and that was um, um, Alexa deciding to join in. Mary. The conversation. <laughs> That was pretty cool there. Well, Alexa is happy to be here, but how about you, Sierra? I'm so happy. Thanks for having us on. And her mom, Patricia Pierce. Uh, nope. <laughs> there. Oh, I'm her aunt. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Who are her mom <laughs> for her? Uh, no, I get the easier job of being an aunt. Oh, so you're the cool aunt. Yes, yes. I'd like to think that. Okay. Aunts are better than moms, I think. Just just saying. As a mom of three daughters, so yeah. <laughs> I'm a mother of three sons. Oh, okay. So you get it then. All right. So anyway, so uh, the reason that I asked you guys here today is that you have a book series out, correct? Yeah. Lots of education materials we've just published with Berkeley. Okay, awesome. So I really wanted to talk to to talk about them because I know we've talked before. Sierra and I have talked before, and I know this has sort of been in your your periphery for a while. I am so glad to see that this has come to fruition. Well, thank you. Um, we've been working, I like to say, in the quiet for a long, long time. <laughs> so we're happy to finally show the world what we, um, the Groom Curriculum team has created and made. Okay, so tell me about it. I'm I'm actually really excited and I can't wait to actually get now to my next Barkley show so I can like thumb through them. Yeah. Um Patty, do you want to talk more about it or do you want me? I don't want to overspeak, so <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Um so Groom Curriculum is definitely an educational program. So the book series that you were referring to is part of our program that you will need to take the course. We also have an LMS, which is called the Learning Management System, but the books that you can buy at the Barclay Shows or go to um, their website uh, is like the supplemental material that would go with the program, along with posters and a teacher workbook and the student workbook. Nice, nice. So, so explain all of that to me, because I just thought they were a series of books. Okay, so yeah. um, and you go ahead, Nat, Sierra. <laughs> so, Grim curriculum started off to be our college curriculum that our partner colleges around the nation utilizes our curriculum to have accessible education for people that want to become a dog groomer. So this is like, I always say like 10% of our curriculum and we took out like the solid nuggets and we wanted, cause a lot of people are like, well, we want to, they would go out and call groom curriculum or email like, Hey, we'd love to use some of your materials. And it was all locked up for colleges only. So we, you know, took apart pieces that we loved the most and we made some books out of it and posters and um, we decided to have that retail part for already existing groomers and all that good stuff. So we have three, well, two instructional books um, and then a journal and then uh, over 30 posters um, that we have for the public to buy. Okay. So when you say the public to buy, do you mean pet owners or do you mean pet groomers? All of the above. So we even have like some, um, our posters, our positive growth mindset posters. That is Patty's brainchild. Um, we have like classroom teachers using them. So in like English classes and fifth grade and all the cool stuff like that. So um, for whoever, a pet owner, it's really nice because it helps that communication between the pet owner um, and that groomer. So like, oh, this is what I've been trying to communicate to my groomer. You know, it could be on that side of the spectrum. And then you have the pet groomers that really it's, uh, we kind of created these books with my mother in mind. Uh, she, the big books of 500 pages and then some always like made her feel, what's the words I want to use? Like she just, it, she wouldn't even open them. Yeah, <laughs> she wouldn't even open them to read them. Like she just felt, uh, so I really wanted to, help her be able to groom the dogs that we saw most common in the pet grooming salon so okay all right so about uh, let's start with the posters first where can someone like buy the posters or where can somebody like at least 
because you know what? After we finish here, I want to I want to go look at the posters. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, BarclayStore.com. And I'm going to let Patty talk all about the posters. Those were her brain children. Um, they with our graphic designer, um, founder Shelby Mitchell and Kira Mann. They've they've helped Patty. Patty, you know, started with a word doc and then she told what she wanted, and then our graphic our design team created them to be these beautiful, they're in my background. I know that listeners can't see, but they could go to barclaystore.com and see them. But I'll let Patty speak about those for a hot minute. So to kind of further explain the posters, you just need a little bit of my background. Um, I'm a teacher, or was a teacher for 32 years. And I taught inclusions, uh, special education, and general education. And I use the positive growth mindset. The most famous one from Carol Dweck is, um, I can't do this, or I, I haven't, I'm not able to learn this. And you just add the word yet. I can't do this yet. And when you change your mindset to a positive set of, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be challenging, but I'm going to be able to do that, was always in the back of my mind as Sierra and I were developing this curriculum. So each of the lessons relates to a concept of grooming or to the real world of challenges that we face. Um, you know, communication is a huge problem for beginner groomers or the owner to try to explain. So there's posters focused on that. Um, time management, we can all, you know, have help with that. No matter how well you think you have things organized, a lot of stress relief. So when Sierra said this is for the public, it definitely can be used in um, public school systems for um, uh, just one that popped to my mind is sit, think, and check your facts. That's something very necessary that everyone has to do, no matter what walk of life you are in. So it makes more sense when you go through each lesson to see how it connects to it. But there's definitely a purposeful connection to a positive growth mindset um, for personal growth, professional growth, um, and just how we treat each other in the world. That's my dog yelling at me in the background, by the way. <clears throat> um, you're speaking my language because um, I think mindset is one of those things that as business owners and groomers that sort of like off to the to the wayside that people didn't think too much about it. And it's like one of the most important things. I don't think you can be a successful business owner if you are not looking in at your mindset. I just don't think that's possible. Well, and I agree. Like we just, all of us have challenges and struggles and each day is going to be a little bit different. Um, and when you can just step back and say, you know, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm, you know, uh, just changing that. So you're not bringing yourself down yes. and believe me. So our two worlds have merged together. So, you know, Sierra is in this wonderful world of dog grooming, which kudos to every dog groomer out there. That is such a difficult, tough job. Um, some people might say kudos to teachers because that's also a definitely tough job. But when we merged our two worlds, my uh, world of education with her world of professional dog grooming, it just was a natural fit because those concepts fit so beautifully together. Oh, no, I agree. I have a lot of admiration for Sierra when she's doing in the pet industry because a lot of what we lack is that solid educational, that continuing educational, you know, basis that, you know what, I might want to learn something. So where do I go to learn it? Okay. And there's very, first of all, there's very few of us teaching mindset. Number one. Okay. Um, I think that's left out of a lot of the curriculums. So I'm like really, really happy to hear that you guys have included that in your program. Okay. Well, it's funny because um, that was never on my list to do. You know, when Pat, when I told Patty, this is what I want to do, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but this is a heart that God, or this is a dream that God put on my heart. And then when she, you know, she's like, do you know what I do for a living? And I was like, no, you're a school teacher. She goes, I like <laughs> curriculum. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so when we laid out the whole curriculum, she's like, so this is, you know, all the curriculums now a day they're matching it with a durable skill or a soft skill and um 
this is this is huge and this is what we have to do and it was never on my mind i never thought this was important so knowing and learning the importance of why it was like a no-brainer i'm like wow this is that's how everything has built and so knowing the importance of a positive growth mindset and bringing that into any grooming salon or um, being the employer of a grooming salon or even just the employee like if you could be a solid person you're gonna everyone around you can be too so there's so much good benefits about it well yeah because you know what there's two two different like mindsets right um i remember when that you know jessica's affirmations came out on youtube and that little girl was like you can do it okay and that type of person is very very infectious but the other type of person who's also very infectious is the one you know who lights the pitchfork and 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 says you know and then brings everybody down so you have to, you know what, there's everybody else is in the middle. So you have Jessica and then you have the pitchfork guy, you know, um, and both can be infectious. All right. It's just, which one do you want to be? Yeah. And, and when it, you really go through the curriculum and you start to see what's taught during the lesson, and then you see the connection to what the positive growth mindset and journaling activity it, it truly does relate. They are parallel. So I'm going to bring up another example just to explain that better. One of our posters is put a leash on what you can control. You know, what's in our control, what's out of our control. And again, this is so multifaceted. When you're grooming in that salon, there's so many things that you can't control, you know, that are just going to happen that are out of your control. But at the same time, there are things you can control because when you know how to better read that dog's body language, you're going to be a better groomer or safer, safer groomer, um, you know, wearing personal protective equipment that is within your control to prevent groomers long. So you're learning all of the safety, sanitation, grooming techniques that you would need to be a groomer, the foundational and theory skills but then also putting that twist on it as, you know, what can you control and not control because there's going to be those factors in your life. Okay. Yeah. So now I want to hear about your, um, how do you get this material into the school? So you said you had where they were with like with colleges and then you wanted to branch out or others explain that the others to me, how, do, how is that working? Um, so we have our partners, our colleges throughout the nation, right? Um, and those are building daily at this rate. Um, so that's super exciting. And then really just, we, you know, we have all these, I have all, all these dog grooming friends and then that, um, how do I explain it? That they were like, you need to get this out there. You know how many people this is going to help, you know, you, with my mother, she had some learning disabilities. So um, like the best person in the world, heart of gold. Um, but we've always had to explain things in a slower pace or kind of like layman's term it for her. Like, no, that's not what the teacher said. She meant this. So between me kind of like not dumbing down a 500 page book, but just to explain the solid key points of what you need to do to get that dog groomed. And so you could be an efficient groomer for the salon you work or you, you know, for the salon you own. Uh, so then that's when Patty came in and really like put the pedagogy theory on it and, and all of the research-based methods that go behind it. And she really, well, I, I always say she's an educator, but she's also a communicator. And so I gave her all of this stuff and this is what I wanted to build. And then she really dissected everything and made it. So it, it was a true book, an instructional theory book with all of the research methods behind it and how to communicate um, and all that good stuff. So the Pet Stylist Playbook is, uh, I'll have Patty explain it because I know I'll just ruin it <laughs> with my, I, you know, she's the true educator. I'm the, I like to say I'm like the person that throws up all the ideas I'm a good leader, but I also, I need that help of making that happen. And that's, that's what Patty is on Groom Curriculum. Before so explain start, that. I, wanna, I wanna touch on that right there, okay? okay? Knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at and either pulling in a partner 
or hiring or delegating to do the thing you're not good at. So kudos to that. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Tell me all about it, Patty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I said, we already had the relationship of being aunt and niece, and we already had our passions. My passion is teaching and education. Her passion is well, teaching also with in dog grooming. Um, you know, most of Sierra's teaching of the dog grooming was definitely the hands-on. And you need that portion. I mean, that's just common sense. You cannot become a dog groomer without solid, good hands-on training, uh, which been, you know, you can watch a video to get that, be one-on-one -on -one with the person. Um, but you can also learn those techniques of what you need for grooming by reading, um, by using different teaching methods. So one of the exciting things for me is I was really super nervous, at especially our first trial classes. Um, if you could have the students create a song to explain a concept. And I just did not know how that was going to fly. And it has been amazing. The level of thinking that is produced when these students create, it's a parody um, on you know, the grooming concept of the importance of rinsing. It's so much deeper than what you would get just by multiple choice question, by seeing someone do it, because now you have such a deeper connection because you've pushed yourself to this deeper level of thinking. So with my years of teaching students with um, learning difficulties or students with autism, you know, people who just see things in a different way, there's other ways to learn concepts to a stronger level of knowledge or to apply it or to you're now going to remember that. And it's fun. It creates such bonding and laughter and that connection that we just need in our in our daily lives. You know, I probably had a light bulb moment and I'm going to go back, I don't know, probably at least a good 10 years. And where I realized that how I learn is not necessarily the way everybody learns. Okay. Um, and I had a, the light bulb moment was I was teaching a class and in that class, I, what I didn't know at the time was a school teacher who was thinking about becoming a dog groomer. So she went to, I think it was the new England show and she was taking classes and stuff like that. And she came up to me afterwards. All right. And said, I was, had been the only instructor that she had the classes that she took that was reaching all different types of learning, all right? And I got that information from when I was learning how to teach pet first aid because that was impressed upon me. People learn differently, but it didn't really, really click in what it is I was doing until somebody had, you know, you know, pointed that out to me. You know, and then I realized that in our industry attracts a high number of neurodiverse people. Mm -hmm. much higher. Well, and in Sarah's book, The Pet Stylist Playbook, she really focuses on that visual learning. Yes. And that is what is so important that you can read all of these passages, but when you can gather that information and it makes sense because she's color coded the text, the um, dog, the pattern, everything that is there that you can visually, and then you can look to see like it's for this coat type. It just makes um, a quicker reference to it too. And just visually, um, when you're able to use concepts like that or learn from visual learning, it's also a more efficient way to learn. Right. So you had mentioned before we got started that you're a children's author? Yes, I am. Um, I wanna hear about that. <laughs> I have a, well, I have two books out. They're about the state of Iowa. Um, H is for Hawkeye and Iowa Alphabet and Numbers in a Row, a numbers book. It has poetry for the younger reader. And then the sidebar is informational text about the historical agriculture inventions, people, everything related to the state of Iowa, which is where my home state is from. And that's where Sierra is currently living. Um, and then through that, I also wrote for newspapers, a lot of educational materials, uh, teacher guides, again, a splattering of all sorts of different 
information, but my main love has been educational typewriting. Okay. So, cause I get, a, I get questions from people who would like to write books, right? So I have a couple of books out too. I have two that are being uploaded probably sometime today. Um, and one is on emergency and disaster planning, a template. And the other one is a mobile groomers guide for people who are thinking about becoming mobile groomers. So it's a workbook that they can fill out to do all their research, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, but to, to actually write a book. So if somebody asks you, somebody is thinking about writing a book, I want to write a book. What advice would you give them? Write every day and be persistent. Know that you can do it. it, it it's going to happen. If you love it and you have that, it's, you know, you got it. It's, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to, what I would do is I would schedule time in my planner. Right. When I realized that I wasn't actually writing that, you know what, it was there. I want to do it. I want to do it. But I wasn't doing it. I scheduled time in my planner that I was going to make the time until it became more of a habit. So that even though I know I need to do it, I don't have to schedule it anymore. I'm just going to do it. All right. So consistency and persistence is kind of key. I, I want to put a side note to that is I've never written a book before until Aunt Patty was like, oh, like, yeah, we can put this in the public. Let's write books. And so it was fun knowing the process of how that works and how many drafts it takes. And it's really just throwing it up on the, just throw it all up. That That's the, that's how I've written all the books is put all the ideas out and just, bleh. You <laughs> and then you can sort it through. <laughs> you know how many, um, drafts there were of a spirited life just oh, throwing I'm them. gonna guess like 30 um there were probably close to about 30 I also had really I had some really close friends who knew spirit um who proofread for me you know and, and that helped as well too but yeah there's there's you just don't sit down and write a book I even even Stephen King will tell you he doesn't sit down and write a book uh, I think it was it him or somebody else that said he writes the first draft, reads it, laughs, throws it out, starts over again. I could say that was probably your first <laughs> couple of drafts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we got the concept down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm writing a ridiculous book now, and um, I went through the first. I, you know, the, the first draft of it. I'm like, um, yeah, no, we have to fix this. This is. I like the idea, but yeah, this is, this is, this is not working. But that's how things grow is just being brave enough to try and, and throw it up and see what comes out of it. And sometimes it was just a good activity for yourself. Yeah, and then other times it's like, oh, this is something. Oh my gosh. What did we do? Like, look what we created. So it's very I'm going to cool. ask you how many books you think I have written. Um, published. You yeah. said four pretty much right now. Okay. And then so there's there's four. Do you know there's four. actually six? six? Is that okay. yeah. Oh yeah, I don't talk about the first two. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I would say oh, that okay. you've written and not published. I wanna say there's nine more. Oh, there's 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 yeah, but there's two books that are that are actually published. Okay. Okay. If you search really hard, you could probably even find them. Okay. Well, okay. I don't really talk about them. Okay. Because if I could find where all they are, I probably would take them all down. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> what were they about? What? What were they about? I'm not even going to tell you that. Yeah. All right. Just one of the secrets to Mary Kondo. <laughs> yeah. So you can, you can find them. Let me know. But yeah. <laughs> And now that I'm taking the challenge, Mary, I'm going to have to try to hunt for them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but there's there's four that I'm going to. Um, yeah, there's, there's, well, two are going to, going into the publisher. All right. But there's, there's two right now that are out and available. No, no, no. I take it back. There's three. That, what am I talking about? There's three that's available. There's four and five coming. Okay. Well, that's really cool. I love that. 
Um, I love the book tour you're doing right now. And it's inspired me. I'm like, Patty, we need to do some book tours. Um, yeah, well, you know what? Setting up the libraries and very cool. You know, if you do it locally, I think you have, a, they're available at the community colleges, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So community college has a library, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We just, it's one of those things that like, oh, we need to do it, but we have like our calendars are so booked out that it's like yeah. one day we're gonna get to it <laughs> yeah 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 you she's in indiana yeah so it's really hard because she's in indiana i am in iowa so we do have like a i want to call it more of a block party than a book party that we're going to do in indiana um for her family and friends and just have a party that you know they kind of giggle sometimes because What's Would Aunt Patty you? doing with her dog grooming world? Um, because she was this educator for such a long time. So she's kind of the talk of her town. Would it be fun? All right. Because Barkley has one of my books, has holistic yeah. pet grooming, right? Yep, yep. Um, wouldn't it be fun if Barkley at a trade show did a book signing thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to Hershey. I'm not going to Hershey this year. Darn it. As I was gonna say, that's like my only one I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 a pain in the butt to get there from here, from Washington. Okay, yeah. My daughter is pregnant. She's due in between Hershey and New England, and I just got a jury notice. Oh, <laughs> you're not going. <laughs> well, so I have- The already... world wants you there. <laughs> Well, yeah, the universe just wants me right here. And you know what? I'm looking no. at the jury notice and I'm thinking, uh, you know what? I'm not going to fight it. The dates aren't bad. I might as well just kind of get it over with and do my civic duty. And here in Washington, it's been four years since I've gotten a jury notice. And I got my first jury notice. Literally, I moved into the house. I relocated from Connecticut to Washington. I'm here a month. I changed my driver's license. And like two weeks later, I get a jury notice. That's funny. I think I remember listening to that on one of your other podcasts. Um, yeah. 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 But I was like, what that? no time, no time <laughs> to nail me for jury duty. But then yeah. COVID hit and it got, everything got canceled. And they're like, ah, you're good. We'll let you know when. So I guess it's now when. When. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, um, you're going to go to Hershey. All right. Yes. So that's the only trade show you're planning on going to, correct? As of now. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. How I do you go to more than I am. Um, I'm summertime is my husband's go time. Um, we have like a big excavation roofing construction company. Uh, okay. so I, I have many hats that I, you know, my first job, my favorite job is a mother. Then I have to, you know, my pretty much office secretary for my husband and then groom curriculum. And I just closed down Glamorous Paws. So my boarding groom, because it was just too many at one time. So oh, okay. until yeah. September rolls around and frost, it gets a little cold, then I'm free to go again. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So you closed down one of your businesses because that was a really tough thing for me to do when I decided that, you know what, I was done grooming because I had the bright idea that I was going to drive my mobile grooming van out here to Washington and groom one day a week. But then, you know what, I'm still not devoting all of my time to my other business, which is positive educational training, because I'm busy grooming. And honestly, Sierra, what sense does it make to groom one day a week out of a mobile van? Well, that's kind of what I did. I, w I went down to, I had five days a week, then I went down to three, and then I kind of went down. Well, I've always been to three. <laughs> I just went, th um, and I was gr working for Groom Curriculum those two other days. And then, you know, you it was a Thursday, Friday, Thursday, I get the colleges. Most college employees took Friday off. So I had one day to move the needle. And so that was kind of me too. It was like, what is, what do I want more out of this? What, what do you want pick. more? And picking. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I missed grooming. I say I missed grooming for all of three weeks. I set the date in the book. This was going to be my last date. And nothing was going to be scheduled after that. And I will tell you, getting closer to the date, I was like panicking. Okay. Oh, yeah. Patty heard every little side of every little worry I had. You know, first it was the clients I'm letting down. Then it was I've always had 
my income for the family. And then you didn't mm -hmm. have that. And then, and then you're like, what if this doesn't work? Like yes. I just wasted all this time, everyone's time. Like it was all of the worries, but, um, my situation is a little different. My mother is a dog groomer. My sister's a dog groomer. Uh, a lot of my students that worked for me work for my mom. Now she took the business, the boarding, she took the kennels. My husband built her a kennel. Um, so it's like, they're all still taken care of. So and if I really needed the itch or if I needed to grab a dog to groom just to make me happy, I could still do it at any day of the week if I wanted to. <laughs> okay. So um, it took me three weeks to not miss it because then my shoulder stopped hurting. And it was like, yeah. holy cow, I could sleep on the side that I want to sleep on that I haven't been able to sleep on in years because every time I turn to that side, it hurts. Okay. And I was in a friend's grooming shop yesterday okay and it was like covered in this old hair on the floor and i was wearing this sweater this sweater you don't wear in a grooming shop okay but do you think i actually like remembered that when i walked into her back room and the next thing i know i am picking i'm not picking i'm pulling hair out of my sweater i don't miss it i don't miss it Okay. And I'm sure if I asked her, can I work one day a week? She'd say, yeah, but, but yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a big no. I remember my, the vet that I finally decided on in the area and they were giving me a tour of the facility and they took me in the, in the back and I saw that they had a grooming station there. All right. And there was a part of me going, look, a grooming station. And there's the other part that had like, put the blinders on Mary. You don't like don't look, don't look. It's not there. It's not there. Okay. Don't even give them the suggestion <laughs> that that could possibly be a thing. Yeah. Well, and that was our big thing is, you know, we see the lives we're changing with groom curriculum, with making education affordable and accessible in communities. And it was really, it was the time to pick a Patty was carrying most of the loan, uh, most of the load because she retired early to do this with groom curriculum and it was it was a hard look of sierra what do you want what do you want to do so since i've since i've closed down that chapter we have just been it's been it's it was definitely the right call because we are changing those lives and that's that's what we're here for and knowing that we could have people learn a trade and you know be the first of that family member to go to college and then maybe help like, make it um knowing that they the other people in their family break the chains is what i'm trying to say yeah go to college and all that good stuff that's that's our heart job i'm gonna go grab my book the book so you could kind of see it. i know our listeners won't but okay yes i actually want to see the books i'm actually really excited about them you know and i really truly cannot wait to see them at at my next trade show Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. so the pets this is the pet styles playbook um okay. and if you guys go to barclaystore.com you'll see a little bit about it um, but this is the first one we talked to. And actually the reason this book was created was the game plan. So this started as like a, the game plan poster. I'm trying to explain this because people aren't actually seeing our screens. The game plan poster started as a bingo chart. And this was with Patty trying to figure out, she doesn't know what a tasseled ear is, a hair foot. You know, she really just wanted to figure out what I'm talking about and like, just make it organized mess is pretty much what it was and she's like you talk about this here but you talk about that there and so I open we we work on like a shared drive thing so I open it up and I see her typing I'm like this is genius oh so I'm plugging and playing I'm like a terrier gets this and this and this and a and a you know, we, at the time we called it a teddy bear trim, but then you see all the controversial, like, no, it's not called that. It's called this. It's a puppy cut. So we made up our own name and called it the modern classic. So everyone's on the same page and no one's fighting us for titles. And that's how this book really started was the game plan chart. I don't know if you could really see it, but it's like a bingo chart. So this is a great communication piece between the pet owner and the pet groomer. And hey. so say they wanted a contour trim and that's like a shave from nose to tail, but you know, maybe they wanted to leave a bevel. Oh, I, I really, yeah. really like no, that. No, thank you. So if they wanted a whole contour trim and they said, I want, you know, a beveled tail, I can't really see because it's green, a beveled tail and a beveled ear, they could point. And then 
And then the students will know, because as an instructor at a community college, that was the hardest piece was the student would check in the dog. They would, you know, they would do the whole reception thing because that's how you learn how to be a dog groomer is that piece as well. And the owner would leave and they said, yep, they could do that. And then they look at me with like deer in the headlight look and they're like, what does she want? I don't know. What does that mean? Is that like blue comb on body? And I'm like, you didn't get it. So I, so this part was so helpful with those students and they could just point and they're like, oh, yep, that's what I, okay. I know what she wants. We're all on the same page. Can I ask so, you a question? Yeah. Have you thought about that, that thing where the people are pointing of just making like cards where people can laminate them and the owner can do like a check. You have them, right? Um, so we have, we're on the process more, a little bit more techie than that, where um, you could like, I don't know how to do it quite yet. It's in the plan, but like you could click on the bevel tail and you could watch a video of the bevel tail happening. Um, like but you I, could kind I'm thinking, of, no, I'm, what I'm thinking, you're thinking of flashcards things. No, no. What I'm thinking is like, you know, um, owner is at the count at the reception desk and then you have for their file. All right. You have that card and, but it's. Ooh, like, like this. <laughs> okay. Like that. okay. So now for our listeners, I am now showing Mary that our observation and reflection form. So this form comes with the pet stylist resource guide. And so what this does is I like anybody, you don't have to be a student in a college. Um, this could be, I know some of my groomers in my own salon, my mom's salon is using it right now. Um, any big corporate salons can use it. It's just making sure everyone's speaking the same language and terminology. Um, knowing, understanding, this is, I'll show you, so I'm talking too pretty fast, but this form you fill out, you know, your name, your date, the dog's name, the breed, um, the tools you touch. So instead of someone saying, I use the purple brush, you'd be like a pen brush, a slicker brush. Like let's learn the names. Come on. So they could write that down. Then they have to write down the page number, the groom they just did out of the pet stylist playbook. Okay. And then there's coat types and they need to figure out, um, in most groomers, it's kind of funny as I speak at like a Barkley show or WPA show, I'll ask, what is this coat type? And everyone looks at me like it's a golden retriever, but they can't physically, some can, some are right on the money. Um, but some of them are like, I don't, we've never learned that. Like we just know the breed. So I thought it was very important to include the coat type. Okay. And good. on the pet styles resource book, it's kind of a cheater. So, um, I got so many. No, in the <laughs> so look, they we have the coat types for that breed that's being groomed. So like okay. this is the natural. So the natural coat is like the baths, the short and the smooth coats. So then they check that box off. And then you have the bath type. So like a lot of people don't even realize water temperature um can do a lot to a coat. Yes, um, yes. Whether it's oily, whether it's dry, you know, are we melting the oils off? Are we not trying to make more of a mess? Is the skin like fragile? Um, all of that stuff matters. So that's a box. So even some salons that didn't realize all of this, they're they're learning and all of the information of why are in these books. Awesome. And then body language. Body language is included in this as well. So and we have that in a resource guide as well. You know, can you label if the dog's being content, apprehensive, aggressive? And it's just really, it's a worksheet for the everyday groomer, whether you've done this for 20 years or if this is your first day to learn. It's just really standardizing industry terminology and, um, you know, body language and being able to read the dog. The game plan's on here. The water and air direction is on here. So, you know, poodly coat, you're going to blow dry and starburst for, so it just sits up straight, you know. Aga Shih Tzus, the beautiful show dogs, you would never do that because she would just look like a fluffy Shih Tzu. You want it to look silky and pretty. And, you know, so there's so many different ways to groom. And this is what our colleges always go like, wow, I didn't realize there was so much to grooming. I thought you just threw the dog in the tub, scr scrubbed it a little bit and washed it off. Or this really just breaks down kind yeah. of step by step what groomer does. And then the products needed. So instead of saying like, you know, the one in the purple bottle, you could say, hey, I, I used, um, you know, avocado scissoring spray or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, 
So these are something that we use all three together. Pestalis nice. playbook is going to teach you how to groom the dog in the eight common grooms that most salons see. And I'll just go through that list real quick for our listeners. So it's a natural for like those pugs, those labs, the terrier. Modern classic is like our puppy cut, but I just threw a name because I know on those Facebook forums, a lot of people like to, to have war over that name. So just pulled my mom card and gave it a new name. It's called Modern Classic. All right, so that's it. You heard it all. It's called Modern Classic, people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a poodle, you know, we see the poodle still. Um, a contour trim that's, you know, we're showing off the true contour of the dog. All the hair's off. This is what the dog looks like. The sporting, so, you know, your, your setters and your spaniels. Asian fusion, that's been uh, like one of the doodle grooms. And then the silhouette trim so like your australian shepherds even your corgis anything with the silhouette so those are the eight grooms in the pet styles playbook that we break down in pedagogy theory um you can kind of see so we have what it should look like in each thing a text to go with it the text that's color coded that matches the color coded diagram and then it even shows you the direction to even do all the things um awesome. So yeah, these books have, I could not have made this on my own. Mm -mm, not so whatsoever. This is all Aunt Patty taking my stuff and organizing it and putting it behind a research-based method to connect with the learner. So we're not teaching, we're also connecting. Right. Um, so all of these are great. And then the resource guide, it's my favorite book out of them all. Um, it just really breaks everything down. Um, from tools to the fear, like to the body language, the coat type, the water temperatures, all of that, all of these, these two books will help you fill out the observation reflection form. Nice. And Mary, I would have to say, because I did not have the knowledge of how to groom was actually so beneficial when we were writing because, you know, Sierra would supply me with the materials or say, this is, you know, would it have to be? And I'm like, okay, I can organize this. I can put it in sequence. I can, um, you know, plan out the units. I can give titles. I can proofread. I can add the, you know, testing. I can do all the educational part. But I wish we could have captured our conversations because when she was trying to explain to me the undercoat and the shaving and damage that can happen just being able to keep simplifying it so I could understand what she was saying in the Pet Silas playbook, um, Sierra was saying, it's just like if you mowed the grass. And so that visual is there. And it's like one of those aha moments, like now I understood what she was talking about. And it just became part of now the learning process. So I really think that was one of our benefits was because I didn't have that knowledge. I used, like you said, I brought to the table the educational world. She brought to the grooming world. And then together to explain it in the most simplified form is really where our magic started. You know, when I first was starting to write for Groomer to Groomer magazine, I would have my husband read my articles. Yeah. Because he knew, he doesn't want to know anything about the pet industry. He doesn't care. But so... He, if he read, says, do you know what I'm talking about? Explain to me what I just wrote, okay? And if he looked at me with a blank stare on his face, it's like, give me it, I gotta go rewrite it. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You but wanna they, read the reader. You wanna yeah. make sure they read something and learned something and they took something from it. Yeah, because just because I know what I'm talking about doesn't mean the person reading it is inside my head and knows what I'm talking about. All right, so yeah. you're gonna be a groom expo. And I'm actually going to send a Todd a message after this because I think he should be doing the whole book signing tour on all of the um, of, 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 of the shows. I mean, they're selling the books right there. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we just told people we'll be there. You know, I mean, I'll put up, if nobody comes to my book signing, I'll still make it look like everyone came to my book signing and I will make people stand there, okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's going to look like the time of our life. <laughs> Do you know, 
when I did the book signing at my local bookstore, I took a picture of every single one of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, this this is just a smattering of the people that came. Yeah, yeah. Not and it, that's, all the people that came, but it's a smattering of the people <laughs> that came. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, all the people, those are our people at the show. So we might as well have a little book signing event. Um to showcase our book and people that want to learn more and meet the authors. I am actually now going to throw that idea to Tina because I'm going to be at the Colorado Rocky Mountain show. And it's one of the few um, shows that I have an actual booth at. So I'm vendor. So I think I'm going to throw up, Hey, I mean, there's other vendors there that have books. Yeah. Why don't we do like a book signing thing? Make, Make a thing of it. Yeah. So if that's what you want to do, come over to the Colorado show. I like the small shows. I think yeah. they're intimate because you can get, and I love, don't get me wrong. I love Super Zoo. I will go to Super Zoo. Even if I'm not speaking, I'm going to Super Zoo. Because one of these years, I just want to like leisurely walk the show. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a huge show and you don't have time necessarily to spend half hour, hour talking with a vendor when there's 4,000 vendors there, you know? (laughs) Oh Um, yeah. So I do like the small show. So Colorado Rocky Mountain show, it's their second year. I'm really excited to be there. Um, And for those who are going, I will have copies of the, of not only the mobile groomers Bible and here comes Pooh Bear, there he goes. Um, For those who are watching, Pooh Bear has made his his appearance. So I not only will have copies of the Mobile Groomer's Bible, but I will have also have copies of the companion guide now that really is going to go with the book. Um, so it's a workbook. So, you know what? Let's let's do a book signing. Let's do it. Um, I don't know if Rachel's going, but Rachel works um, for us. And so she's kind of like our representative at the show. So um, maybe she'll, she'll manpower that with you if you want to do that or something. Oh, you know what? I'm going again. I'm going to send two texts. I'm going to send okay. Yeah. And one to Todd about, you know what, why don't we do a book signing event besides myself? There are other authors that are going to be yeah. there. Yeah. And we really try to push groom curriculum as like a whole, like we're all personalities of it. None of us created this by ourselves. Um, so if Rachel represents groom curriculum, like we know that she loves us and she, She's one of our LMS instructors that teaches for the colleges and she'd represent us very nicely. And she's a really cool person to meet. So, okay. <laughs> and I'll see you after September. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I may be fun in the sun. I don't, I don't know, but I gotta, I gotta see when that kid is making his appearance and how that, you know, correlates to my jury duty. <laughs> yeah. But I do want to bring up, this is um, the choose your star learn. That's our motto. But a positive growth mindset journal. This is all of Patty's posters that she's created. Oh, there's a journaling piece to it. I'll have Patty talk about this and I'll just kind of show you it. Um, Talk about your Choose Your Star Learn journal. So, Mary, you mentioned, you know, what would I recommend anyone who wanted to get into writing? And my first response was, you just need to write every day. Mm -hmm. So, writing is thinking. And it forces you to think it's such a great way for personal growth. So it's just fits right into your purse or your bag, whatever you have. It's very small, uh, but there's enough room that if you could just journal for five minutes each day. It really helps you focus again, a positive growth mindset. Um, plus the cool thing is to go back and read it six months later. Oh, yeah. And you see really me. see how much you've grown or it makes you laugh or something you've forgotten about. Um, the students actually journal during our lessons. That's one of the requirements. And that is one of the most heartwarming, inspirational time of the class. It's volunteer. Students don't, you know, are not forced to share it because it can be very personal. But I'm always in awe when a student shares a personal writing uh, again it's usually like related something to grooming but it was a challenge that they overcame or came through you know a new set and again it's kind of hard to explain just going off the i just <laughs> oh and i kind of got lost for words there um 
without actually looking at what the journal entry is, but it really, I just really, okay, I'm opening it up so I can stop stuttering around here. Uh, practice gratitude is one to be grateful. So just even writing down for three minutes, things you're grateful for can change your mood. Um, active listening is the one very next in the book. And that's again with your client communication. Are you really listening to that person? Are you thinking about what you're going to say next? And if you can just focus on, you know, just those little skills, it's those tiny things you can do each day just to be the better version of yourself each and every day. Well, and here's the thing, you know, it's, there is, when you write at the motor skill, it, it, it links, it's shown that it's linked to like the creative parts of your brain. So when you write, your brain is thinking about, it's what makes your brain work so well, especially when you're thinking about a solution to something. I always say, if you have a problem, write it down. Write it down on a piece of paper and forget about it, okay? Let your brain do what your brain does well, which is think about what it needs to do, okay? Um, I love gratitude journals, all right? There is just something about, because it makes your mind see the good things. I think we all have similar things, that things are good, things are bad, but which ones do we see? Do we see the good things or do we see the bad things? When we see the bad things, we focus on the bad things, that, that takes center stage, rather than looking at all the good things that have happened and, and seeing, well, I'm now noticing the good things. And that I think is really what the switch in the brain is, all right? My husband is very much, he would benefit from journaling, he does not journal, okay? You know, we'll be going down to the, to the airport and he goes like, we're not gonna make the flight. And I'm like, yeah, we are, you know? <laughs> Yes. Well, what happens if we, we miss the flight? We're not going to miss the flight. Don't worry about okay, it. But... <laughs> you know, you know, I know all about traffic and I have scheduled enough time to account for traffic. We're going to have extra time. That's why I have a lounge membership. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what? If I haven't used up all my spare time to get there, then I have time to go sit in the lounge and, and, and relax and enjoy. Okay. But he sees the negative. And I see the positive, but I like to think I win out because positive is always better than negative. I agree. Where do you see this in five years? Okay, where would you? Where do you see this in five years? Our books. This whole thing you're doing. Where do you want to be with your groom curriculum in five years? And then I want you to write it down, put it on, and then I'm going to talk to you in five years, and we're going to see where you're at. Um, we hope that most of Every college, if not, um, we'll start getting really strategic about where we're placing our college partners. So people have an hour to two hours at max to go to a community college to learn a trade of how to become a dog groomer. Um, and then, of yeah. course, with books. Here, Patty, you go. Yep. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt there. I was going to say, I hope it's less than five years, but I really hope that dog grooming is increasing in the value is seen as a trade. Yeah. And I think the professionalism of dog grooming, that was one of the most shocking things to me when I started working with Sierra was kind of realizing that dog grooming was not recognized as a trade. And I think that's a shame. So I hope it doesn't take five years, but I'm our program I think is going to start making that change that people well, and that's realize it is a trade. And that's one of our hardest things getting into a college is I know even when I told Aunt Patty what I wanted to do, she truly thought this was going to take a week. And then <laughs> she, you know, and once you come to the dark side of dog grooming, you never leave. <laughs> so, she's here to stay. But, you know, even Patty, like she had that huge realization. It's not just washing a dog. You know, her sister-in-law was a dog groomer, still is. And you know, for the longest time, she thought we just threw them in the tub and groomed them. But now she's like a whole new appreciation. But we have to speak in, in, um, to like uh, boards of colleges um, to represent and to to get to get dog grooming on the trades list is a lot harder than anybody in this world has ever imagined. And, we're and I think that's that daily. I think and when I think when that happens, when we are a recognized trade, I think the mindset around us switches. It does. It does. And the colleges, they, they see it. They see the, the students it's bringing in. We're, we have a waiting list of people wanting to become dog groomers. But 
a trade cannot get on that list. It's community colleges that apply to get on that list. So um, it'll be really fun to see in five years that, you know, unemployment offices, like it's not just CNA um, or, you know, uh, truck drivers, it's it's dog groomers too. And, and that's something we're working on as a whole is showing that this is a recognized trade. It's, you know, the job, most dog groomers make good money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not the bottom of the barrel. It's just most people just think because it's a dirty job that I don't know. I don't know what they think. If they think we're janitorial level or what, but once they see like, oh, you're a speaker, how many trade shows, how many people go to trade shows? Um, there's a credential, like all of the things they don't even realize how much there is or groom team USA. Like they don't realize until we speak to it. And then they're like, wow. Yeah. Well, we might as well get one of those programs, huh? Um, so yeah. Okay. I wish you well with that. All right. <laughs> and in five years, I hope to be fully retired from grooming. So I might check in with you, but that might be it. <laughs> make sure. You know? In your retirement, you can still go out and do your book signings, Mary. Yes, I can. I can. Yeah, well, we'll see you yeah, but now I got to go send two texts because I like the idea of like actual, because when I did the book signing, it, it was a very, very specific time. You know what? Yeah. Yep. So it's not an all day thing. Yep. Not an all day thing. You want to come to the book signing. This is the book signing right here and then. And I just want to say for Spirited Life, I have paw print stickers. So oh. Spirit can sign the books as well. That's cute. Yeah, Patty does a lot of book signings with um with the things that she's published. So okay. So we're let's gonna go hop on board. We're gonna get used to this book signing world. It's just to make time. Yes. So let's let's make this happen. All right, ladies, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. I really appreciate it. Mary, Thanks for I having like, us. So, yeah, and I, I'm still learning this. Mary, I was going to say, this was my debut. You were my first podcast. Oh, okay. All right. So this might be really important in five years, too. <laughs> so that's why I kind of stumbled. I'm learning my ropes of how to do this. So thank you for being patient with me. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for being patient with me because, you know, this is technology sometimes. It was a couple of bumps with technology trying to get this thing started. Um, but everybody join us next week when I interview somebody else making a difference in the pet industry. Oh. Well, thank you. And if you guys want our books, barkleystore.com, we have a couple other wholesalers that just created accounts. So you'll see them at other places. And we're so excited. And hopefully we can help make a difference and make grooming just a little bit easier. Okay, so we'll see everybody next week. Bye.